Okay, I get asked this all the time. So let's put this one to bed, all right? Light, medium, or heavy tanks? What should I build? Let's find out, okay? Okay, we'll start off by making a direct comparison between the 1938 medium, the 1936 light 2, and also the 1934 heavy. I get it, I get it. These aren't like for like. I get that part. They're all different years. They're all over the place. But for the most part, these are the ones you have more likely to have access to in the early parts of the game. To be fair, most of the tanks in the start of the game, you're going to be building around about now in 1936 to 1939. And those are the ones we'll be using in the war. And of course, we'll expand upon that by looking at some of the other tanks. So, so let's start with the welder okay the production cost so the light two 2.48 for the chassis okay the medium 3.6 not a big jump really very similar it's the reason why people tend to have a preference for medium they are a good balance between the armor the hardness and the overall production cost now finally then we have the heavy 12.8 production cost of course the threshold has gone up massively be aware though this is very important they don't all have the same number of tanks needed for a single battalion so let's illustrate that so we say an infantry division here and we'll add a single light on a single medium on and a single heavy can you see you need 60 lights you need 50 mediums and 40 heavies now one of the spreadsheet bios might whip out the numbers here and actually see realistically what the production cost actually is but it is something just to note so even though the cost of a heavy does seem absolutely massive be aware you only need 40 compared to the 60 you would need for a single battalion the reason we make tanks is for two reasons there's two reasons, but there's kind of a third one as well the third reason less people are aware of but we'll expand upon that in this video so first of all breakthrough breakthrough nine for the light 10 for the medium it's practically the same so ignore that and then we have a massive 20 breakthrough for the heavy breakthrough is basically your defense stat your armor stat on the attack it is a bit like a D, D perspective it's like wearing heavier armor so therefore when you hit take damage you actually take less damage overall having lots of breakthrough on a tank is great for that reason it gives you that benefit of breaking through and therefore making encirclements and pushing divisions out of the way that's the way you can imagine it in your brain the second thing people care about with tanks is armor 15 for the light a massive 35 for the medium that's a big jump up so the medium is definitely the winner here and then 35 for the heavy tank. Now, this is confusing because you're probably thinking, hang on, this is the heavy. Surely it should be the heaviest, right? Well, it's because we're looking at a 1938 here and then a 19... 34 heavy the way the game works is the first heavy isn't really the most cost effective one when it comes down to the overall stats of course we'll expand on that further though because we're going to look at maybe more of a mid to late game heavy to have a direct like for like comparison and the final stat the one that people don't focus on as much is hardness so what is hardness it's a percentage of a division of how much damage they will suffer from soft attack and hard attack let's just say it was a division that consisted of 100 percent light tank the division will be 80% hardness, meaning it will only take 20% of the damage from soft attack. So artillery won't do a lot of damage to this division. However, hard attack from like anti-tank guns or tank destroyers will do significantly more damage because more of that damage will get through. It's a way of illustrating how mechanized and armored and vehicle based a division is. And usually nine times out of ten it's always better to have more hardness because hard attack is rarer to come by but soft attack you can get in higher numbers earlier on 80 percent for the light 85 percent for the medium they're practically the same so just remember that practically the same and then finally that the heavy has 95 percent hardness that is significant it's a massive jump up and that's the reason why people do have a preference for heavies high hardness tend to be higher armor and tend to be higher breakthrough the amount of damage you do is going to be massive we're going to get rid of the light too for the time being because we want to look at the terrain stuff stats and the terrain stats are here under the basic light so ignore the stats themselves we're just going to focus on the terrain traits and this is something about light and medium heavy tanks that most players aren't even aware of did you know that light tanks are better in all terrain situations than mediums and heavies so if you're in a situation where you're a light tank attacking let's say into a mountain or urban you're going to be better off with a light tank due to the fact that they'll suffer less penalties attacking those difficult terrain types so let's have a little look first of all look at forests so you will suffer from a 40 percent reduction in speed 
and 20% reduction in attack. Let's not focus so much on the movement speed because for the most part, these divisions tend to be faster because they're, what, they're tanks. But to top it off as well, if you're making breakthroughs, don't focus so much on the movement speed. It's not a big deal. Anyway, focus on the attack. 20% reduction for lights, 30% reduction for mediums, and a massive 40% reduction for heavies. And that's the reason why if you ever make a heavy tank division, like a 44 width, not only will the supply be an absolute nightmare, but if you ever attack in a mountain with a heavy, you're just not going to break it. It's not going to happen. That's the reason why most people make light tanks. And I do find myself making lights more because now you can customize them with a tank designer to give them loads of armor and lots of breakthrough, which tends to be what light tanks lack. So as you can see, heavies have got that benefit of hardness. They've also got the benefit of breakthrough, but then they're getting these massive penalties in different terrain types. The one thing that jumped out to me that I've just realized is there are no hill modifiers for light tanks. Light tanks will perform just as well in hills as infantry. And let's just confirm that because I don't want to be giving you bullshit information. That's 100% correct. Hills, infantry, and light tanks will perform exactly the same. That's really good information to know because overall, you would always expect hills to uh, have a penalty for tanks, but it does for mediums and heavies, but not for the lights. Be aware though, hills do have their own problems. They do have a flat 25% attack penalty so overall that will apply to everything that's including infantry as well as light tanks for the most part that's pretty crystal clear right one final note amphibious this is where tanks tend to perform the worst uh, minus 40 percent for lights minus 80 percent for mediums that's why you can never break that straight between sicily and naples in italy because you suffer such a massive penalty and the uh, penalty for amphibious for heavy tanks is minus 90 percent that's right medium and heavy tanks absolutely suck at amphibious invasions but let's be real so delights 40 percent is a massive attack penalty to be fair if someone told you can launch an attack and you're gonna have a 40 percent attack penalty you probably don't want to be doing it okay there's one final thing here you've noticed can you see this at the bottom right what's this this is an attack bonus bonus for the heavy tank that's right heavy tanks get an attack bonus attacking into forts however this 10 percent is very small and most of the time forts are based in more difficult terrain types such as alsace lorraine which you can see a lot of those are urban and mountains and hills there's probably is the one that's plains there's this one that's plains so this is the one that you would tack into if you had heavy tanks. But you're going to suffer from a 110% reduction in attack penalty due to a level 10 fort. Same with the Sudan too. A lot of this is hills and mountains. So you still got the difficult terrain types to, to beat as a heavy tank, which is difficult. And also the Alps here as well. Once again, you just can't break this. It's just something that's nice to know, I suppose. If you're ever in a situation where you have to bust forts in more easy to break terrain, such as flatlands, uh, such as in maybe in Ukraine, for instance, then heavy tanks will give you that full 10% extra attack bonus on top of the additional stats that are really great as well, meaning that your ability to excel at heavy tanks in planes against force is fantastic. When it comes down to raw stats for the chassis, they are the basic bonuses. And that's the kind of most important information you need to know when it comes down to the stats you're probably never aware of. However, it gets a little bit complex now because we now have the tank designer and there are certain tank designs that can only be built by certain tank types. So let's hop into here. And we can see the different tank chassis available to us. So light tanks are special because you have the ability with light tanks to fit different suspensions on them. And these different suspensions will allow it to take a penalty to hardness so a less hard overall division but overall it can make the tank overall cheaper so this is a light tank if we go into suspension here we can go for non-track suspension so this is more like a a truck suspension but on a tank so it's kind of more fitted towards driving on tarmac than going off terrain. However, the game doesn't reflect that by giving penalties in different terrain types. It just reflects that by making the overall cost of the vehicle cheaper. So the best one is wheeled suspension. It reduces hardness by 30%, which is not great because like, you kind of want hardness for tanks. But overall, light tanks don't have a lot of hardness anyway. So I suppose that's that. And it also reduces reliability by 20%. But overall, the reason why you're selecting this is because it reduces the cost of the tank by 10%, which is a massive reduction in cost. It's really big. Top it off, you also have access to half-track suspension too, which is just the same thing, but the bonuses are reduced by half. Overall, I can't really see the people per reason why you would ever do that one. If you're looking to make the cost of the tank as cheap as possible, you'd go for an overall wheel suspension. Just be aware, you can only do this with a light tank. You can only fit non-track suspension wheels on a light tank. You can't do that on a medium or a heavy. So that's the thing that's unique. And to be fair, that's the only unique thing for light tanks. For everything else, these are all special things for mediums and heavies. Okay, the next part that's important is turrets. So a light tank can only have small armaments, okay? You can only fit a small armament. You cannot fit a medium. 
See this? It says that you cannot build this tank because it has a medium armament. There is a workaround if you want a light tank to have a medium turret. So let's say I want to have a medium cannon on a light tank. The game says, no, you cannot do that. The way around it is you change the turret from either a one-man, two-man, or three-man turret to a fixed superstructure, which makes it a more defensive turret, which is kind of more like a tank destroyer or a self-propelled gun. You lose a lot of breakthrough, you get a little bit of defense, and you don't get the bonuses of breakthrough you would get with a multi-man turret, with a moving turret. And overall, you could use this, but it has to be a different role other than a light tank. For in this case, it would become a tank destroyer. So that's the only way you could do a light tank that holds a bigger turret than a small armament. When it comes down to fitting larger turrets onto light tanks, you just can't do it. The heavy armaments are not available to light tanks. The, the turrets are going to be too overwhelmingly big and you just will not be able to fit them. So it's just not possible. Okay, next up, look at the medium tank. The medium turret with a one man turret on it has a big penalty to soft attack and hard attack. This is a recent change that they've made. This only applies to the medium turret on the medium tank, but it also can apply to a heavy tank if you put a medium turret onto it. Uh, never select the one man turret. You either want the two man turret or the three-man turret. Uh, the cost is very small, and overall, you don't suffer from the big penalties. So you always want a two-man turret for a medium tank. When it comes down to medium tanks, is that they don't really have anything unique and special about them. They're just like a really cost-efficient, stat-efficient light tank. And overall, they're kind of the go-to if you want to have a proper tank division and you want to try and excel as much firepower as possible. Same again, light. you can fit light armaments on them, you can fit medium armaments onto them, and you can also fit heavies. But be aware, same applies to light tanks. If you want to go with a heavy armament on a medium tank you need to have another medium fixed superstructure basically a turret that does not move so ignore it when this moves you see this there it's moved it's moved no it can't move it can't move it's a fixed superstructure at the same time you have to change the classification of that tank so if you ever want a tank destroyer or a self-propelled artillery weapon with a fixed superstructure medium with a heavy armament you can only do that uh, by categorizing its role as something else which is this case artillery so be aware it's really important to note this when you're going for heavy classifications as tank from light to medium or medium to heavy you're going to take advantage of the bigger armaments the bigger guns on them which overall give better stats overall anyway so if you're looking to focus towards stats, definitely go for the mediums and the heavies is definitely the way forward. Because there is a potential with a heavy tank, we can fit on a heavy armament. And in this instance, we can fit ourselves with a heavy howitzer, which does absolutely huge amounts of soft attack damage. But you don't have to classify this as an artillery piece, meaning you don't lose the breakthrough and you do not lose any hardness, which is actually a hidden stat, funnily enough. It doesn't actually show that. But overall, this is lets you maintain the stats the best possible. But be aware, not only does the production cost go up for heavier armaments, but also the resource cost. Uh, the heaviest guns cost tungsten, loads of steel and loads of chromium. So be aware, the upfront cost for that is absolutely absolutely massive you need the, the industry to be able to kick out these vehicles hence the reason why my meta the feedback gaming meta of most tanks is to focus towards cost efficient tank models but once again you do you okay do what's best for you if you want to focus towards getting those big meteor stats in that case you want to go for the biggest possible armaments it goes without saying not only does the production cost go up but also the stats go up too so if you're looking to get a tank that has the best possible stats and the best possible firepower possible and project those stats you are going to be better off going for a heavy tank but be aware that these tanks tend to not perform as well in difficult terrain types it tends to be a tank that tends to perform best uh, in plains and desert hills and forests even though they will sustain a penalty in hills and forests as well is a catch 22 do you want to make a light tank that's flexible but it's lower on the stats sure go for the light if you want to focus on raw firepower that might only work more effectively in certain terrain types definitely going for the heavy tank is definitely the way forward just as a few of the variants just worthwhile noting if you could go for a heavy fixed superstructure on a heavy tank you can actually fit on a super heavy armament as well which has some insane stats but also an insane production cost too five tungsten two chromium for this cannon that's just absolutely ridiculous 225 piercing 54 heart attack 45 soft attack this is some insane insane stats but you've got to specifically say it's a tank destroyer as well look at this baby oh fixed tank destroyer with a super heavy cannon i didn't even know you could even make this i'm learning new things about the game boys tank destroyers are pretty good by the way i'm not against tank destroyers the only downside of tank destroyers is you lose some breakthrough but overall their stats are fantastic and you don't lose any armor or hardness which is always good okay let's do the final form right a realistic comparison between a 1941 light which is the most advanced light tank you can get a 1940s medium i know there is a 1943 medium as well however this is a more realistic one you're going to make in 
most late game scenarios. And then finally, the 1940s heavies, which is kind of like your Tigers Chank chassis. So let's just look at the raw stats on this one. Breakthrough, 9 and 10 between the light and the medium. It's basically barely nothing. A big 20 heavy uh, breakthrough for the chassis. I believe that's just no different from all the way from the bomb. Yeah, the chassis give the same amount of breakthrough from the, the earliest design to the more advanced design. The big difference between the more advanced designs is you get more reliability. And what reliability allows you to do is put more modules on the tank to get more stats overall. So we've got 130 reliability for the light and the medium, but 115 for the heavy. Trying to reflect in the that the engine's going to be more stressed under a heavy chassis, so therefore it's going to be more difficult to run. Light tank, 20 armor. The armor for the medium is 45. We're going up massively now. And then a massive 55 for the heavy. So at the end of the day, the heavy is all about, let's go balls to the wall, all the production costs, all the power, and all the stats. For the most part, between the light and the medium, unless you're going to go for a interweed road wheels on the light tank, the production cost isn't pretty much that much different. The biggest bonus you're getting out for the light tank is you can make it potentially cheaper by fitting road wheels onto it. And also you get less terrain penalties overall. But to be for the most part, when it comes down to the cost between the light and the medium, there's barely nothing in it. But if you want to go all hardcore and go for all the stats, the heavy tank is the way forward. Another difference too is it does use chromium for the heavy tank. So just be aware of that. Okay, super heavy tank. You want me to talk about it, right? Yeah? So the armor goes up astronomically. So from the heavy to the super heavy, we've gone up from 55 to 85. The hardness has gone from 95 to 100%. So if you have a division that just consists of super heavy tanks, it will have 100% hardness, meaning that any soft attack damage will not affect this tank. It will take zero soft attack damage. Breakthrough is slightly higher, not much though. A little bit more reliability. Production cost is astronomically high. <laughs> <laughs> and the production cost is just stupid. Three steel and two chrome is so unbelievably expensive. The only time I feel like this would be worthwhile is if you're going for a superior firepower division template and you're adding on a little bit of extra armor to go for like a supermarine division. That's the only thing I can think of. When it comes down to the stats though, we're getting a problem that gets worse and worse. If it was difficult to break terrain with a heavy, you've got more of a problem now. So 30% penalty attacking mountains with the heavy, 40% with the super heavy. Y you get the idea. We don't really need to go into these stats. It suffers from a minus 100% penalty doing amphibious invasions. <laughs> <laughs> the super heavy tank. I guess that makes sense, I suppose. One other thing to note as well, which is really interesting, is forts with super heavy tanks. You get a 50% attack bonus. 50%. That's really huge. So this does have like a one niche usage. If you're breaking planes or, or forests or hills with it and fighting against forts, you'll get a massive attack bonus. In most cases, you won't get a net benefit from that. It'll still be a minus to the overall firepower, but I guess it's something to think about, I guess. The only time I feel like this would be worth it if there was four it's like level five forts in the middle of like Ukraine, for instance, and you, you're trying to break the Stalin line, for instance, and that's the time the super heavies would come into force. But other, uh, otherwise, they're just mad expensive. And to be honest, I'd be afraid to use super heavy tanks because I'm worried that it might damage the terrain bonuses you get from my existing divisions because I kind of like divisions that work flexibly in most terrain types. And uh, when you add this on, you're unfortunately weakening the division's ability to break mountains and urbans and a lot are all different terrain types so overall it is a bit of a niche thing and to be fair super heavy uh, tanks come so late it's not even an overall big deal uh, there's a side note you got the uh, amphibious as well amphibious are kind of weird because they have an attack penalty in planes but overall they get a bonus for rivers marshes and amphibious and the stats are very similar to a light tank basically they're an expensive light tank that can do amphibious invasions they do what light tanks can't do which is amphibious invasions and it could do them well Comment below, guys. Are we doing lights now? Are we doing mediums? Are we doing heavies? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I love you. Anyway, if you want another one, more Hoy stuff, more Hoy content, give this one a click. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.